Well, Kyle. Yes, Gary. Is that? Is it just? Are you? Is something happening? Is it? Is there action? Okay. I th- I think it's gone. Okay. Uh-uh. Oh, Let's try right. it again. All, All right. right. Well, Kyle. Yes, Gary. Is this just gonna? Is this just gonna keep happening? Is this my life now? Is this forever? Wait, wait. It's okay. One more time. Well, Kyle. Okay. Yes, Garrett. Jesus, where is? Make it stop. Zero. Oh, I'm glad that music's over. You okay? Is it? I think it's good. Okay. I think we're good. We're good. I think it's All okay. Right. I All think right. it's over. Uh, what were they thinking? Bunnies? You did! For what? Would you be happier had I a good? Do you have any idea how worried we were? We don't usually outline what we're going to talk about right away on these videos. You can look at a chapter markings below. We do do those and probably make an assumption. But usually we sit down, we talk about what we just played, and however long it ends up being, sometimes it's multiple parts. We don't go in knowing if we're going to break the video up or not. But in the case of this video, we were talking about it, and we're like, do you have much to say about the bunny section no no garrett and i was like no kyle i have no interest in talking about the bunny section pudding way where oh where is this star's blasted pudding but then we started to actually outline our talk try and get a feel for where the breaks in the chapters would be and we realized oh you know there's actually a lot on the outer edges of that long Loperitz, I'm going to say it, I'm brave, filler Ooh. section. Oh my. Yeah. You don't care for grapes, pumpkins, I, lemons? I actually f- hate grapes. What about agricultural systems and water towers? I'm, I'm, I'm actually very passionate about agricultural systems. Oh, they're wow at the technology of today versus creation magics is very long winded. I mean, that's fine. What I'm really trying to say is that whole section just felt like side quests that they were like, let's make a main for some reason. It was an interesting idea that in a world where people are despairing, passing out little bunny Wikipedia phones to everyone would be a good use of their skills. But no, was it particularly fair. fun? That's no, fair. No, yeah, no, not, no. The, not the best. And that, that music, goddamn. That music just kept playing. However, in this impossible burger of bunny episodes, there was a very interesting sesame, bun, lettuce, cheese, and sauce. Yeah, we have the, the doc scene that we really want to talk about, which is probably where we'll end today. Portion no. Is the doc scene for Portion Portion no, yeah. And also all of our payoff for doing all of the side content that we did. I say side content. Non-MSQ required content. Yes, raids and such. Yes. 
obviously we also want to talk about the moon breed parents scene. And we want to talk about the big Xeno scene in Garlemald, which is where we begin. We begin with no one giving a f- that we went to Elpis. Oh yes. Yeah. Now the two characters to not give an F about Warrior of Light being special and going on some special journey, it would be Kryl and Tataru. They're managing the finances, the people at home, being real heroes. And we went to the Crystal Tower to watch like a video presentation. For all they know, that, that that's fair. But really it continues with like no one really caring. Graha cares a little bit, tiny bit. <laughs> that's it. No one, no one has a reaction. Elpis was amazing and none of the Scions give a shit. <laughs> I get why they didn't care much, because shit be going down in other parts of the world. But still, it was kind of harrowing. It was very interesting. Harrowing spelt with hair? No, 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 no bunnies yet. Unless you're counting Emmett's hair, which is fabulous. I mean, Xenos' hair is also... I think everyone... Everybody's hair is fabulous. fabulous hair. You cry when she de-hoods. Unless you choose to have Those locks. They're luscious. Yeah, they are luscious. Luscious locks. So, speaking of luscious locks, Xenos appears. After the trial, and that trial is really important. I love that trial. I love the way it's paced and laid out. I love the way that I beat it in one try. I love that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was doing an AOE heal when I, I even play Sage and Red Mage, but I was doing the wrong heal. Your buttons aren't going to be where your buttons normally are. And they're it's going to be if, if severely any, reeled in from what you're used to. If anything, it's even harder knowing what the actual job looks like and seeing all the buttons in different places and not knowing what you're looking at, whereas pure panic probably actually gets you further. Beginner's luck. That's the reaction I had the first time I ever played Guitar Hero. I got so mad at it. Because I play actual guitar. Oh. And I'm like, this makes no this sense. This is fake. I'm actually quite good at Guitar Hero now, but I was so mad at it the first time I played it. Different skill set for sure. <laughs> yeah. But the way they do it, first off, it's Alphano and Alizé, who are basically main characters next to the Warrior of Light. You're not playing as Astinian. You're not playing as Graha. You play as the twins. DM inserts. They're constantly questioning themselves. More Alizé is always kind of putting herself down, comparing herself to the Warrior of Light. I mean, every side, every character, it, like the villains don't. The villains think they're in the right at all times. How often have we gone off on Yashtola? Like, Yashtola, just believe what you're saying. I don't need the, but maybe I'm wrong at the end. Don't give me that, but maybe I'm wrong. Don't leave room for interpretation. Not at the end, Walker, here. Tell me how it is. So I don't think it's special that the the twins question them. Everybody questions them. But through gameplay, they made a very cool decision to make the Warrior of Light feel completely badass. Because in walks you with your bars all laid out and your buttons where you want them and all confusion and sense of overwhelming leaves your body as you re-inhabit yourself and kick ass. It was a solid solo duty. Solo duties have been phenomenal in M Walker. Yes. I really, it's one of my least overall least favorite things in Final Fantasy 14 up till this point was solo duties. And There's a great moment where Graha pulls out his shield, which you would know if you did the whole Minster switch support duty. So I was like, oh, I did that. I know what that means. I didn't. Yeah, he's an all arounder. No, oh, that's cool. Can fill any job just like Heidelin, but nah. And you know who else walks in? Fortuno. How? Leave the fighting to us, Father. You must lead the people to safety. No, no, no. Eulis. But yeah, Xenos. Oh, that's where you were saying. Yeah, Xenos walks in and kills a blaspheme. How heroic of him. As you know, and as you know, because you clearly watch all of our videos, you would never skip a grinding gear video, would you? But before we go, make sure you check out all of the ways that you can enjoy grinding gear. Obviously, you're subscribed to this channel. You would never watch a video and not be subscribed to the channel, right? Subscribe. Did you know we also have a podcast and a clips and highlights channel? So go subscribe to the Grinding Gear Clips channel and also find Kyle and myself on the Grinding Gear podcast wherever podcasts can be found. We are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, I think... I think Google just axed their thing. Oh, yeah, that's over. I think they killed it. I don't know. If it has a podcast, we're probably there. Subscribe to the Grinding Gear podcast today. You would know that I predicted, heading in Walker, that Xenos was going to pull like a Vegeta 
we're going to become frenemy territory. We, we're going to have to join forces and fight against whatever the, the bigger bad was going to be. And the further we've gotten into this, the more I think I'm just straight up wrong. Like, and I've, I've, I, before this scene, I had already abandoned it. I'm like, now Xenos is irredeemable. Like after our dinner with Xenos, I'm like, okay, yeah, no, this dude's just full bad news. Does not care. Just wants to take us down and anyone else in his way. So much so that he's fine letting Fan Daniel just destroy all of reality. He doesn't give a shit as long as he gets his rematch. He's as selfish as they come, and there's just no redeeming quality. When he when he cuts down that blaspheme, I'm thinking, oh my god, maybe there's hope. There's a hero bone in his body. What is maybe, this? Maybe we will. Maybe we will get in front of me, Zenos. And uh, immediately, no, <laughs> Zenos is he is just as nihilistic as Amon Van Daniel, but uh, in his in his own, I would argue, slightly healthier way. Yes, exactly. And that's why I don't really care what they're going to do with him. I'm excited to see what they choose to do with him. Because there are a myriad of options before us of how they could handle Xenos. That's fascinating. I feel that way about a lot of fiction that I consume, by the way. Like, Not to get too deep into this, but the people are like, oh, I, I, I want this from Star Wars. I'm always like, I just want Star Wars. Obviously, Xenos wasn't going to be the frenemy anymore when we could use the future knowledge of... That's what I crave. Pure, unadulterated despair. You could pass that off on the moon. But when we go and meet Medion, who is unleashing despair, and that's what Xenos... You just kind of go, oh, there's... It all lines up. That's what he's after to some extent... And here's the source. You can compare Amon's third death monologue to how Xenos takes nihilism. And there is fully an excuse and a reason to explore Xenos that now exists. If I have to predict what's going to happen, I expect him to be the juggernaut that pursues now. We're going to have a firefly moment. This is a trope where you leave your friends behind because you got to go do the important thing. Oh, yeah, well, absolutely. Avatar Last Airbender. I don't want to pull up all these clips. <laughs> <laughs> Please keep that in. Please keep that. Oh, my God. Um, it happens. Yeah. But is that the best use of it? Because of the comparison we can now make to Xenos and Amon, I'm okay with this. If you're frustrated at Amon... I think you missed the Xenos part. And if you're frustrated with Xenos, I think you missed the Amon boy, part. I don't think this is what's going to happen. But boy, wouldn't it be cool if what you said happened, but they're successful? Like, wouldn't it be interesting to, like, come back to your friends thinking, oh, God, Xenos killed them all. And you open the door and, like, just Thancred by himself just owned just Xenos. took him down. And Xenos is just having a complete crisis breakdown. Speaking of a moment for Orion J, Thancred really needs a moment, this expansion. I know he got a lot in Shadowbringers, but if you're a Thancred fan, I feel like he could use a little little juice in his corner. Uh, uh, Thancred's great, man. I think the game gives Thancred plenty of love. Plus, he had that big stealth mission. This is Thancred. Oh, true. I forgot about this. Is Thank yeah, so he's, he's just... This is Thancred. He's fully developed. He's good to go. Yeah. Don't worry yeah. about it. No. Uh, who isn't fully developed is Euless, and, and I was really happy to see him again. He's become like a little pet fr favorite of mine in N. Walker. Yeah. I really... Also, that new... Uh, Kokol? Uh, just love him to pieces. But yeah, I've, I've had these little these little pet characters I really enjoy in N Walker, but Eulis is, is probably like a number one side character for me. There's just something about this kid. I like this kid. Well, and imagine, Oh, it, it's such, it's such beautiful. And we say it writing. I call it DMing because it's interactive. We're participating. We're pressing the buttons and having an experience. Yeah. And when Eulis was yelling at Xenos and the whole crowd, the chat was like, get him. Yeah. I hate that guy. Job done. That the the writers succeeded this day. The fact that you are furious with Xenos in this moment, yet you can't be so furious you turn into a monster. Isn't that an interesting little dialogue? Hey, don't be so mad you turn into a monster. It's beautiful. What what a great nothing is better as a dungeon master than when your players are completely irate and you just sit back and watch. Just just relax. You got nothing to do. They're just gonna argue with themselves about your bad I... guy and I, my read on the situation was a, a little different, but in the same camp 
as you. Cause I, I too was thinking so much about how many comments I've read from folks over our two year journey now of, of working our way through the final fantasy 14 MSQ of folks that don't like Xenos in, in some way, everyone's different for different reasons, but there, I don't think everyone hates Xenos, but there's definitely enough people in Final Fantasy XIV that it feels like a trend to me. Not liking Lease, not liking Xenos, and not liking Stormblood. Some people are in one camp, some people are in all three, and some people are in a weird mix. To me, Eulis yelling at Xenos and Xenos saying, would you have preferred... It, it, like, would it... <laughs> Would it make a difference if I had a good answer? I love it's that line. It's the best line Xenos has had in it's the entire wonderful. game. It is an exceptional line, and to me, it reads as meta. I don't know how much of this like Xenos pushback was happening before Endwalker, because I tend to assume now, especially as we're filling in the blanks, that a lot of people in our comments are we're operating off of the full picture. They're operating off of future knowledge that you and I don't have. So I don't know how much people don't like Xenos as a result of Endwalker as much as it was a result of Stormblood leading up to Endwalker. So again, I don't know if this actually is a meta reaction, but it feels like it to me. And that's been my experience with this because of the journey that I've been on and the community members that I have interacted with. It, to me, felt like the like the writers of Final Fantasy XIV. I want to say Ishikawa, but we know there's more than one writer. Right. You know, there's the team, much like how Soken is always so quick to be like, it's not just me. <laughs> there's a bunch of musicians that we work with. It felt like the writing team being like, would it matter if you thought Xenos had adequate motivation? But isn't that the point? Yes. And what Xenos represents. It's delightful. It's goddamn delightful. I really do like Xenos, and I, I do feel I don't want to be too reactionary, but this is also isn't that the point of making content of having other people? Why we could turn comments off if I didn't want to read them or or have a reaction? But I, but I, I feel I frequently me enjoying Xenos gets written off as well. That's because you're a Warcraft fan. You like Arthas. You like these just hmm. big bad villains. And well, first off, how dare you? Second off, yes. Third. But I also I like a tapestry of villains because I also quite like Emmett Selk, who is maybe not so firmly in the villain camp, but still a villain at some point in the journey. I do believe that we are entering a little bit of meta. That's why I was so impressed by the trolley scene. Wait, back in Shadowbringers? Yeah. Initial leveling section of trolley was entirely in a vacuum. There, it wasn't a patch. Someone sat down and said, this is funny, and we are going to drive this into the ground. And it was delightful in that way. Is it that fun? But the, the, also, we go on that journey with, like, the guy who lost his wife. Well, that part's not funny. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, like, unironically enjoy the trolley set. Exactly. But when we get to Totaro, like, leaning with Mama Alphano... There's definitely some meta, the fans love Tatar business going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Why, why wouldn't you? So there's an influence. Yeah. I think you're right to call it out, or at least take note of it. Yeah, I like it, though. And I think it's respectful. I don't think it's like them dunking on the fan base. Even it, it, it could be wrong. But I, 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 think it's a, I think it's masterful. No, it doesn't seem spiteful. No. Alizé gets in on the hate a little bit. In a very Alizé kind of way. She is the hothead and, and, and probably <laughs> she's a scion I tend to agree with the most. She's the one you emotionally connect with the most. To me, she's the one who's like the most human, like who doesn't try to put on an act. It's the reason why I, why I quite like Alphano, why he's still pretty far down my favorite scions, because I feel he's just always putting on a face. And he's not being honest with himself a lot, except in the mo in the moments where, where he's failed too many times in a row and he has no choice but to reconcile with himself. Oh, I think he likes being the way he is, though. He likes himself. And that's okay. <laughs> I think Alice likes herself, too. I'm not saying she does. I'm just saying <laughs> Alphano probably enjoys the way Alphano does things. I find Alize a more honest character. Yes, we've also had many a uh, moonlit tea and coffee and stargazing session, and we've connected more with Alize. I hadn't really thought about that. You're totally right. I think that's why it's so important that we led this solo duty with the twins into us. It really showcases us all as the main characters of the story. We get another percent increase in the Fortuno breakage as Estinian says, 
He'll be off to your seat on the forum next. Astinian being in Alphano's corner is one it's of cute. my favorite character well, developments. And they were in the solo duty together, you know? As I, I have so much love for Heaven's Ward, and that is just a direct payoff of Heaven's Ward, and I just lo I love it. I absolutely love it. All this important business is interrupted by Pudding Way appearing with no, a no. horror what troop? Are you, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. The next thing that happens is Moonbrita's parents talk to Orianje. Nothing else happened in between. There's nothing else to talk about. I do want to talk about the call. The call? Yes. Alvino just owning his dad with his connections. Just putting it on the table. We get permission to go down to the labs again. So, come up to the lab and see what's on the slab. I see you shiver with anticipation. We meet the fabulous mechanic. Coco, love him. New favorite character just dropped. Forshano feels like he has all the connections. Is really looking down on his son. And who should pull up the phone tree on him but his own flesh and blood and call every important person in the world, but mostly Nanamo? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we do get Lise. Lise, I was really happy to see Lise. A man, Elaine, and his brother are at the grave of Horshafont. Oh, that's right. Where that's they hear right. a dragon's roar, which signals that the dragons are agreeing with the calls that are going on here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I have nothing but grumpy reactions to this. Yeah? Because all I saw was things I would have rather done than what the game made me go do with Laparitz. <laughs> Um, I would so much have rather jet set it back to every expansion that I had played before this to talk to these people myself, maybe even like run a dungeon or two or have a solo duty. And instead the game was like, no, 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 no. Alphino's got this. You get to babysit a bunny. It is kind of funny that people would call that filler. But you and I were both sitting there being like, oh, my God, are we going to rerun the burn so we can go into the the Allegan technology area. I hadn't even thought about oh, recycling dungeons, but I would have been to, like, super into and that. we're going to be ripping out some panels while we're in there. And then it's like, hey, you got to go run Crystal Tower again in order to get some Allegan. And you're like, yeah. And we were going to have this huge quest list, which would have frankly been a huge bother on the MSQ. We probably would have paused. I mean, the Loperate section is like three hours. It's huge, right? It's a big chunk. You could have three dungeons. could have had some other stuff. Yeah, I'm with you. I really yeah. would have enjoyed no, it. No, this is not world. a bit. I legitimately am just like, this is cool, but I wish that's what we did it's instead a, of it's a retreading Labyrinthos. It's a reward for all the connections. Final Fantasy is a game that is intensely good at keeping track of characters off screen. It's wonderful for Alpha Now. I love this scene too. I'm absolutely with you. After what followed though, I, I think back on it and go, boy, I would have rather played that than just been shown it. It would have been fun to delve the dungeons for all the adamantine. It's, it's so rare that I feel like I, I, I wish it had been more interactive than all, than a show in, in this game. But this is this is one of the first times that has happened to me. I can see the comments of people being like, Ew, what a quest that says run 20 dungeons. Uh, we really like dungeons. <laughs> but like we really like the whole channel started because we really like dungeons. Pretty much, yeah. It, yeah. You sold me on it, but you finally got me to come back in because you were like, just give it to the first dungeon. I'll run the first dungeon with you. And if you don't like it, I will stop bothering you. And I liked it. And then we had a run reborn, all the bonus dungeons, and it was just a dungeon palooza. But dad has to stand there and watch his son with all his connections make the call oh yeah it's, it's a fantastic. beautiful moment it's so good it, it, it is good other thoughts invasive thoughts aside it's a good scene and we get to the only scene that matters in these uh, multiple hours full of nonsense closure
Would someone <laughs> stop the music? <laughs> That's what that is. Uh, let's see this shit, man. <sighs> Ugh. Oh man, that was a good scene. I want a big hug like that. And there's nothing we can surmise here that I don't think would be better served by our stream moment here. Uh, other than I just want to reiterate that I loved it. Oh yeah, uh, Moonbrita is probably the tip top of my best and most woefully underutilized characters in this game. The savior of Realm Reborn patch content. It's some of the roughest content in this entire game. Uh, Moonbrita is like not only one of the only good parts of it, in my opinion, but also still just such a standout character that still just sits in my head. Like I just sit there going, what if she was still around? Like it'd be interesting. As I think of so many fictions where we find out characters were meant to be killed off and then when the, as they were crafting the product, they realized, oh no, this character, they're too good. They interact with our other characters too well. We cannot get rid of them. And of course, I'm making a Breaking Bad reference right now. I think about that with Moonbrita. I'm like, what if they had kept Moonbrita around? You could say the same thing for Yasail. They're both extremely strong characters. Yasail got at least a whole ass expansion, not just like a patch. <laughs> but it's, uh, she's just such a, such a freaking strong character, and the the longer we go and the more they develop Orion J, it's it's a tragedy. It just gets more tragic as you play through the game. If you have that reaction, if you're like me and, and Moonbrita kind of lives rent-free in your head as you continue your playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV, this is very nice. Because you if you like Moonbrita, you're probably gonna like Orion J, even if maybe you didn't like him in the moment. Because he's cloak and daggery. There are two characters that in tandem. One by virtue of still being present and having a story that continues, and the other because of her attachment to the character that was still present. I just kept getting sadder and sadder. I just wanted more of that character. I wanted more of Moonbrita. It worked for both, is what I'm trying to say. It's nice that Orianje got closure. I feel like I also got closure in that moment on a character that I'm surprised means this much to me. Well, if we're talking about how Final Fantasy can be too real at some time. Certainly you just described death and the ever, the never ending questions of what would it be like if they were here? How much life they still had to live. And it was intensely well done to the trembling hands as he attempted to hug back when he felt like he could never be forgiven to even the sun and the moon parallel they made in the optional dialogue on the back end. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's not, and then you think about all of the, 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 the iconography of Orion J's new outfit post Shadowbringers with the moons and the crescents and the fact that he literally is the scion to stay behind on the moon. Yeah. To, to, to basically like serve his guard to do his, his dutiful, his, his honorable duty. That's poetry. Yeah. It's, it's freaking fantastic. It's it's absolutely fantastic, and it is such a, uh, no, it, it's I think this is gonna hit anybody who has experienced loss hard. Um, been through a lot recently, not my story to tell, but uh, it certainly made me think of it. And it's just like you don't don't you want to give that release to those who are left behind in your life? Because that's who that, that's what I think about. It. We're talking about those who are left, like, how do you continue on when those who, when you lose someone close to you? And that's Somehow, after the zaniness that is the Loperit section, they find a way to have a, a really poignant scene like this. And I'm excited to see Orianje in the future. He is. That man is, has earned his vacation. That man has earned that pineapple cup. Whatever he's doing up there. Whatever he's drinking, he's he earned, earned that, that drink. Yep. And Thancred should be working you the lazy that drink, old drink, Orianje. If it even is you, Orianje, and not some like clone because you died. Jenny, all what? the stars are here. It's true. Beardy Man, Claude Racine, Dax Flame, uh, Betty Fine, you got it. and Raphael Fine, all the stars. You really keep up with all that. Are stuff. here tonight. Oh, yes. I am so happy we stalled as long and as hard as we did. We got all the goods. Well, except for one. Eureka. We didn't finish Eureka. We didn't finish Eureka. No. I really want a Eureka. Like, like legit. 
I can't believe I want to do it this bad when we're this close to the end of Ven Walker. I, I legitimately, I, I think I'm afraid of how many videos I know I'm going to want to make when we get to the end. And so I'm just not stressing about the end of Ben Walker because I'm like, I'm going to have so much work to do when I get there. I'm thinking about all of the other things that I want to do for like Eureka sounds so fun because I'm just like, I know I'm going to enjoy the end of Ben Walker. There's no way it can suck that much. <laughs> Even if I don't like it as much as other parts of this game, I'm sure it still sticks the landing. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you, Final Fantasy 14. But um, yeah, I'm coping hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of baggage, a lot of baggage going on. Emotional baggage, work-related baggage. It's it's nuts. It's wild. I want to play Eureka. Let's play Eureka. How has the journey been? <laughs> it's been worthwhile. Right, exactly. Has it been worthwhile? Yeah. Um. God, yes. That's... What a stupid-ass question, Pinah. Right? Get out of here. <laughs> We've done a lot of side things. We've had a lot of adventures. So much and so much that like we didn't really even have to do to fill things. We've done so many extremes just by virtue of loving it. We love extreme content. Um, I feel like it makes us look like the worst players in the world, but that's how we like to play extremes. Oh, well, yeah, but we're not here to impress anybody. Yeah, man. And, and, and now I get it. Now I get all the people that have been like yelling at me when I'm like, yeah, the raid raid stories are, they're, they're made up and they don't really affect the story. And here is a direct payoff. If you've done like all of the raid content. And customized too, we heard. Yeah, you just don't even see the stuff. And Boja and Eureka. Yeah, right, right. There, there's other background characters, like standard background inserts for these characters. But the this scene down at the the Charlene docks, yeah, it was really cool. But we get the big Tatar moment and the reveal that Emilians was funding the venture. Oh, such a good reveal. I I this is where I Again, this is where I feel people were reacting to my reaction with future knowledge that I did not yet have. Because I didn't really like Emiliance when we first met her. She just seemed kind of rich. There was one line when we first met her where she was like, oh, be careful if the servants find out, or if Fortuno finds out, the servants are going to suffer. And I'm like, why don't, why don't you that? stand up to him? Yeah, do why don't something you do about something that? about that? Because you are your own person and you're a part of this family structure. I've probably read into it more than I needed to. But nonetheless, that is why I was less like, you kind of seem like you're just towing the line. You're like getting away with what you can. Never mind. Fully. She is absolved. Fully of sins. absolved in my mind. I absolutely love as someone who just, I just wanted Fortuno to get owned. This is so much better than anything I could have ever come up with. I, I just, I, I thought his, his dumb evacuation plan, his give up plan was going to fall apart at the seams. And I still think it probably will, but I, now I don't think he deserves that, that sorrow. I love that. Instead, it was just, he consistently had to bear witness to his son being more capable than him. And then finding out that his son has had the secret backing of his mother and their family fortune this entire time. Cause you can't take it with you. Yeah, and 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 it's done in uh, it's executed in such a like a wholesome way that isn't I don't know like I, I feel like it would be so easy for this to go a different direction where like Fortuno gets like angry and it's you get in that awkward situation of like watching parents fight at the dinner table and he takes it on the chin he, he owns it and so it makes it all just fun and funny and enjoyable to bear witness to. Sid, the Ironworks walk up with Alpha and Tiny Omega. So we know that's Omega, but Sid. And- Excuse me. Hmm. You're forgetting somebody. Pori Boulder? Well, okay. You should apologize because yeah. he is your favorite character. Yes. But you're forgetting your other favorite character. Wedge? No. You didn't write him down, so that's no. not going to help you. Yeah, what did I write? What? You're forgetting Nero. Oh, he's in the background. Yeah, Nero desperately should have been a part of this expand. There's a spaceship. They didn't have time for it because they were too busy writing more Nanamo lines. <laughs> it's a crime that uh, maybe it can still happen. Maybe we get our dream of all these characters really participating. And certainly the Ironworks would be there regardless. I bet you there's no version where the Ironworks doesn't show up in the scene. Alpha Omega. Yeah, they're they're bonus if you did that raid. 
but I really hope we just get some moments with Sid and Nero arguing while trying to pilot a spaceship. I just need some Han Solo chewy pressing buttons when the other's trying to press it moment. And then no line from Pippin. That would be the whole setup for Pippin's line. And All right. If Moonbrita is a number one most underutilized character in the history of the game, Nero and Pippin are our number two or a number one characters that are still alive in the game that are the most un- Maybe underutilized. Maybe Dawn Trail's their big time. They get so shafted. I, w- I now want the patch content to be entirely Nero and Pippin. We also have Vitra show up who confirms all the dragons are on board as well. Again, I don't think it's the dragon expansion, but you know, good on them. They're from space and it climaxes in all those breaks coming together. And there's a moment where Fortuno looks pissed as hell. And then it just cracks. <sighs> then I... I will bear it with you. I beg you, share your struggles with me. As family. And he bends down and he gives the twins each a shoulder grab. And what a bastard does the tiny finger lines, which is just the cheapest blow once you're a parent. Because those fingers are only tiny for like three weeks. They, they're just, they grow as quick as puppies. Yeah. But they're so freaking tiny. And it's just, oh, he said the thing. The way he talks about his rage and his anger that this world would even hope or try to destroy this before him is so true. It's an excellent encapsulation of how your your job can distract you from fatherhood, even though you're doing it for them. And so he got that redemption I was searching for. Did it happen how I expected? You know, shoved in a corner, blasphemes all around? That's a little action-oriented. It works well for the character yeah. because he's not going to do a 180 flip around, be an emotionally available father. He just cried for the first time and held half it up 14, 16. Okay, there we go. Nobody really knows. Don't try. Are you talking about don't chart the timeline? Don't chart of the timeline of how old No one agrees. Yeah, yeah. Everyone fights. Yep. We don't care. Yeah, it's, it's a delightful payoff. All of it. Like all of it is a delightful payoff. I still want more payoff. I would like an action oriented. Yeah, yeah. Like let the sky pirates join me in battle. There's, now that actually seems a lot less likely because I think we're heading to the edge of the universe. We get in the spaceship and we shove the crystal in and like, hey, Sky Pirates, come with me, buddies. I do it. Oh, yeah. I loved hanging out with them. Yeah, that's that. That's my favorite raid story. Yeah. And favorite raids. Yeah. Sky Pirates is baller. It was a delight. The raid was a delight. The cutscenes with pirates were a delight to yep. voice. Just yep. had fun in there. And then probably Eden. Eden's good. Yeah. Eden's like just Eden. good required. I feel like we're the odd man out on this. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like everyone's like loves Alexander when that had one good boss fight. I would not have played this game without hearing the music of Alexander and Fiend. But Alexander was a huge part of why I checked out the game in the first place. This section, is, it speaks volumes, I think, to the narrative quality of 14. Because even in a section that I think is one of the weaker in this entire game. I would say the Lopper section for me is pretty high up there on things I did not particularly enjoy. I had fun in the moment because we were both losing our fucking sanity together. Yeah. It was a, it's one of the funnier streams I think we've done. It's bookended by a lot of really great scenes. I have no doubt that we'll have ideas about things we'd like to see. But cooking to me is done. Like this, You got all the ingredients now. Complete your dish. I'm just excited to see what order they're going to put them in, Mm. what spice they're going to add on top, and ultimately what ending they choose, because they've got an absolute fork in the road. I got the pudding! I don't know what to put you with the pudding! (laughs) You got all the pudding! You 